All right, that's CVA pretty convincingly knocking CO2 out of the tournament. Um, I was surprised you guys not so much. Well, the moment we saw the setup with Tree Fleet yes. Tempests and uh, Evor that was reliant on tracking disruptors and um, remote dampeners with no logistics. It just made no sense at all when you consider CVA's track record so far of bringing ham legions mm. and other missile based uh, setups. So you, why would you go with that kind of a meta? I don't know. They kind of misread, I think, CVA a little bit there. I think the fate was really sealed when uh, I picked CVA to win and then none of you did. Uh, that pretty much guaranteed their victory. <laughs> But mm -hmm. you guys were saying that CV, like CVA performed really well in their first match. They bought real saps both times, and losing to the Ronin is not uh, anything to no. be ashamed of. They're a really, really strong team. Uh, CVA just performed really uh, well, and well. I think Circle 2 made some real mistakes in their piloting here. Like CVA have won two complete walkovers. Yeah. yeah. This is the first good match they've won this tournament. But they've Which, brought, they've but brought they good setups to those walkovers, though. Yeah, maybe. Perhaps, but having a good setup isn't isn't enough. You have to execute well. I have to give it to CBA though. Which is why though. Pandemic Legion hasn't won in years. Exactly. You're dead right, my friend. You're dead right. Uh, but, you know, uh, CBA was a little bit unproven this tournament so yes. far. Granted, they've now proven themselves and, you know, they go up on the uh, ladder quite a bit here. Hypothetically, if uh, CO2 came into this expecting Tinker mm. and they said, we're going to bring Damps which are good against Tinker. We're going to be bring Newts in some form, good against Tinker. Tracking disruptors can be good against some Tinkers. Maybe that's what they were expecting. A lot of DPS out of those three Navy Tempests or Fleet Tempests. Other than that, I don't get the setup at all. No Logi, because usually Logi doesn't matter against the Tinker because it's just going to get exploded right off of the bat. But that's the only hypothetical I can come up with that where they thought that that would be a good setup. CBA just doesn't seem like a Tinker style team to me. No, they don't. I That's agree. true. I agree. Maybe they had bad intel. Yeah. But I mean, maybe it was the their CBA. Of course, they'll bring a ton of lasers. Thought. That they uh. mean. <laughs> yeah, but they've brought ham. I, I, I mean, yes, yes, but <laughs> maybe uh, CBA is role playing as people who win tournament matches. Uh, oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I see. that's new meta right there. <laughs> They're one of a uh, few uh, role-playing alliances that are doing well. XX Pizza, XX as well. Yes, they're, they, they're the confederation of XXX Pizza, XX. They're actually an uh, Italian-based uh, confederacy uh, uh, reenactors. Civil War reenactors. Yeah, and they just sort of brought that over into EVE Online. <laughs> and of course, the other ones we have, we have Kadeshi as well, uh, that are still in here, uh, of kind of the, the, the big role-playing ones. And, uh, Fourth district were I in. I think but they were knocked out yesterday. Yeah, they're not knocked out, I think. And of course, Goonform. Yeah. Also knocked out. Who uh, role play funny people, right? Oh, snap. Uh, we, we do have uh, Nali Secunda, which is also a really good team, versus Exile, who are also pretty good. What? Pretty good? Yeah. There, there's like a. Me. All right. Mm. Me. Uh, once again, a little bit yeah. less. I mean, Nali well, Secunda is, is kind of known for being. Um, Funny mm. in tournaments, they they do silly little mistakes, but somehow they still pull back most of the time. They actually have they, a, like a higher than average performance usually. Like for normally, Test and Goons are knocked out, and only still in and win with broadswords and shenanigans. To be fair, yesterday they drove a heavy missile Tengu directly out of the arena and still and won their still match. Still won their match, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these are the two teams now coming up. We have some of their uh, pilots as well. Exile ones do not have a flagship. Um, and so these are some of the people that we've seen uh, playing for both teams during the tournament. Um, Exiled ones has done over three times the amount of damage that Noli has in mm -hmm. matches. Yeah. Also, like the, just the kind of, kinds of alliances they are. Like, uh, Noli has much more big name uh, players. Like, there's, he hasn't flown yet. I've, in, I've encouraged him to flown, but Pro God Legend, one of their major FCs, is in Nolly Secundi. He's also a member of the Council of Stellar Management. Uh, Exiled Ones, uh, just sort of a wormhole group. Like, mm -hmm. Why is he not flying? Uh, I think because he's bad. Yeah, I think because <laughs> everyone knows he's why, a very bad Why does Mittens fly on the Goon Swarm team? <laughs> well, because he's bad. That we know of. That we know of. You yeah, can't sure. start bar fights in a uh, in this tournament, so it's Pro true. God Legend is out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this match is coming up now. Nali Secunda versus Exile Ones. 
Uh, who do we think is going to win? I'm going to go with Nelly Secunda. Nelly Secunda? Um, Nelly Secunda. I'm going to go with Exile the one. Ooh, all right, all right. I'm going to go with uh, Nelly Secunda as well. Uh, we are almost there. Uh, let's just go with the bands quick before we switch over. Nelly Secunda have banned the Basilisk and the Dominics. Exiled ones have banned the Vindicator and the Kronos. Vindicator and Kronos, that's a pretty specific type yeah, of thing. Yeah, they don't, don't want to deal see. with high DPS. Like, that almost says, I want to bring a Tinker set out. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, that, that yeah. smells like a Tinker to me. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't ban Newts, though. Yeah. So if they play it right and they do think they're going to bring a Tinker, um, Armageddon's and Balgorns would be great to bring against those bands. Or then again, they have a Balgorn. Nulli Secunda has a Balgorn flagship, so mm -hmm. maybe they want to kind of... Mm. Or they could be going back over the top with a another brawling battleship setup. They just feel like they don't want to get out brawled by Vindicators and Chronoses. That's true. Mm -hmm. True. Could be. Geddon's still out there. Geddon is absolutely still out there. Uh, Dominix is out, of course, uh, for Nulli, which is... Maybe we'll see triple Hyperions. Please, no. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be fitting in very well. Has that one yet? Uh, no, I don't, don't think, so. think so. If it has one, it won against someone bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, we could also see some rush setups here. We could see um, Gila's Ishtars, drone bait, like shield or armor uh, based uh, cruiser holes. Um, we could see a cruiser tinker. It was Nully who banned the Vindicator Chronos, correct? Nolly banned the Basilisk and Dominator. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Exiled ones banned the Vindicator and the Kronos. Bassy again, I think I'm just finding kind of an odd ban because there's so many, like... Yeah. They're, they're, they're shoeing ships for it. I actually think Vindy Kronos is a really bad ban against Nolly because I don't think Nolly would bring that. They don't no. seem like a... No. That's too cookie-cutter for, for Nolly. Nolly's going to bring, like... Some wacko craziness. Yeah, they had a yeah then again, hodgepodge last time. Yeah, then again, against Nuli, what would you ban? You have, you just have no idea what those guys are going to I think bring. when we played Nuli in the Neo, we banned broadsword in the uh, Opus luxury yacht. <laughs> so that's what we banned. Yeah. Um, and it turned out they were going to bring broadswords. So. Mm, but not the Opus luxury yacht. No, it turns out they didn't have any. Uh, well, you know, you never know. You never know. Strong alliances practice everything. They are on sissy. For practices and they do appreciate luxury. They do? <laughs> and yachts? <laughs> and yachts. I think Pro God Legend actually owns a yacht. Really? Yeah. So his wow. His, uh, I think it's called, uh, the name of the yacht is Hashtag Swag. YOLO. Nice. <laughs> actually, right. can, can, can we get back to the Hyperions quickly? So why are they so bad? Like, why, 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 why all the hate? They're not bad. I think that a bunch of teams have it in their head that they're really good. Yeah. I just think that they're really good in like a way that is losing them matches. <laughs> I'm surprised. It doesn't even make sense. I'm that surprised we haven't seen any Hyperion based tinkers really because you have they okay, so it's got a rep bonus. You've got yeah. eight high slots, seven guns, and a utility high, and a decent amount of mids. So if we think everyone has a large energy transfer, you also have a logistics. Should do I feel like you're rolling your eyes at me, but I think that maybe <laughs> oh maybe I'm ousting a pandemic legion setup and I don't even know it. Tinker with blasters. I know, I know. It's hard to say, but you, right. you damp people, you make them come close, and maybe put on some Michael Jackson on the field, and everyone will want to come to the party. Okay. <laughs> but I, I think that it could be a very strong tank while also putting out good damage, but again, it's blasters. Maybe well, do rails. But why, why does blasters not work with Tinker? Because people can just kite you. All they have to yeah. do is kill one of your ships against a Tinker, stay away, and they win. Mm -hmm. Just stay at 20k and, and, and mm -hmm. fire away. You yeah. know? I mean, Hyperion is not a bad ship. It's, mm -hmm. It is quite a good ship, but the problem it has is that it needs tracking computers and it needs ECCM. If you don't bring those two, you're in trouble. And once you fill your mid slot with those items, mm -hmm. you have no utility left. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the real problem with the ship. Yeah. I think that the teams that have brought it are teams that I probably have practiced or at least talked to each other. They're all sort of the very open, airy teams that are just sort of like, oh, yeah, we're in it for the fun. They're large, large alliances usually. I think they've probably practiced against someone who flew it really, really well and dunked on them with it, they're like decided that it was good and something they should practice with and just not executing well, I guess. Yeah, maybe they haven't, you know, seen the tracking disruptor meta on the first weekend and thought yeah. that this might be strong, 
but you know, second weekend you were bound to come up with good themes who knew that Dominixes were banned and therefore you should bring TDs. Well, and it's all in the secondary, right? If you've got a, if you've got a, a Hyperion comp, it's all about what you're going to bring to support it, you know? If you bring the tracking disruptors, you bring the damps, um, and target painters would be surprisingly good since they do have issues with tracking, mm -hmm. then they, you could make them better, but they're still not super mobile. You'd have to find a way to get long-range tackle or survivable tackle anyways. So there, it would take a lot of work to make them work properly, whereas you can do it easier with other ships. Yep. Fair enough. So what is the, the ship for this comp? The ship for a Hyperion comp, if you were to take the Hyperion out of the Hyperion comp? No, no I'd say for a Tinker setup. Mm -hmm. If you were to run a Tinker setup, what, what ship would you bring for it? Tinker I setup, I would probably bring, man, I actually don't want to get into that because I, there are comps that are out there that I don't want to talk about. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so that's like sort of saying uh, I'm looking for a brawler comp. Yes. What ship do I bring to a brawler comp? Yes, that, that was so exactly sort of how the, the question was. There's yeah. the generic sort of like brawler comp, better bring a Vindicator, but like uh, that is, but sort of like the opposite happens for a Tinker tank where it's like a Tinker setup. It's like Tinker setup, better bring logistics. Like that's sort of the key. It's like you want to bring all any of the battleships that have high resist or rep bonus, and then logistics with long range. Usually, yeah. that's important is having long range. Yeah. Um, but it, well, that, what if it, there's people out there wondering what kind of battleship, for example, would fit this profile? Um, well, let's okay. imagine we have viewers that. Would all be right. So, in ravens like missile spewing, long range, high resist, shield tank. Ravens, Dommies work because of the sentry drones. Uh, we've seen a lot of Navy Scorpions, yes. uh, Widows last year from Pandemic Legion. So there's a lot of those. And the most important part to make it all work is that nothing, you want nothing to be able to die. Mm -hmm. you, want, you want everything to live. So even your support frigates, you need to be able to have them last. And you need your logistics ship, whether it be a Basilisk or a Tengu or a Loki or a Proteus or what have you. You want those to be able to survive a lot of damage because any time, every time you lose a ship, it's kind of like an ECM comp in that fashion, where as soon as you start losing those jams, everything starts falling apart. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Tinkers actually split into two separate mm. streams. You have the Shield Tinkers, which you would usually see either a Dominix, a Widow, or a Raven be the battleship if you're choosing to field battleships. Um, some cruisers, which we will see later on. If you're bringing oh. an armor-based uh, Tinker, which actually supposedly is not called the Tinker, mm. it's called the Meepo, uh, because <laughs> in a Meepo setup, yes. um, which is ripping each other, you do not have as good of a tank as a shield-based setup. Mm. So. Your, you fill your mid slots mm. with ECM instead. And mm. what you hope to do is um, those ECMs to hit enough of their main damage ships for you to be able to sustain reps while, you know, killing their ships as well. Uh, killing the ships tends to be my favorite strategy. Yes. <laughs> there, that been, would be a good thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. So, you know, we, we see some really aggressive all-out DPS ones. Are there any kind of low-ish DPS setups that we've seen that are all right? Yeah, uh, Pandemic <laughs> Legion actually in the, in the SCL runs a, a Proteus Vexor Navy issue Vexor centric setup. It's it's basically themed around cruiser size hole, low sigs. You've got unbonused jammers and the mid slots of all the Vexors. So and they don't have to tank as much because. Over time, those jams are going to work, they're going to matter, and it's going to be easier for you to break the enemy setups because you're getting those jams off. It's not super high DPS, but it's really survivable, and it's very versatile. Yep, and that's called the Meepo. Yeah, and that's a cruiser tinker. One of the actual exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they do exist. And they're just quite good. We haven't they seen quite a lot tournaments. of them yet. No, absolutely. We're not in the final weekend yet, yet, my friend. Uh, one of the ship steps that one of the steps that I hope makes resurgence this tournament. I'm desperately hoping uh, is a ship a setup that doesn't really do a lot of DPS over time, but it does a really high spike DPS, and that's bomber setups. I like any time a team brings a bomber and does a bomber, and even if it's only three, that bomber can spike down people and just set people so off guard that it, things spiral out of control, puts tons of pressure on the logistics, uh, can bring void bombs, break cap chains, all this sort of stuff can happen. Yep. Well, and that's 
All right, so we do have Nolly and Exile ones ready now. And did we all go for Nolly? Nope, I went for Exile. You went for Exile. Well, it does tend to be that the, the guy that goes off uh, on his own tends to be right. But uh, let's see, Nolly do seem like a good team. 